space. of you but welcome to another episode of this functional family podcast back at it baby it's your boy Deshaun Amanda yeah, my name is not as cool we are the Robinsons um yo listen before we get into this conversation first thing I want to say is if you're watching on YouTube please help us out hit that subscribe button hit those like buttons push share up that pain. you know share the share the joint um and also what we love is if you comment, engage with us in these conversations, even if your perspectives are different, we're open to that. If you're listening on any audio podcast platform, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else, um, feel free to like our page. You know what I mean? Follow us and, and let people know about what's going on at this functional family. We're going to invite y'all in to another episode. We having a family function. Yeah. You want to open us up? Yeah. What so are we today, talking about today? Today, we, we scoffing about communication. <laughs> we scoffing about communication. Yeah, let's, um, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Good God, let's talk about it. So, um, in Toni Morrison's book, Song of Solomon, uh, one of the main characters' name is Milkman, and um, his father is like really stern like he's a strict dad it's set in the 1950s mm-hmm. so just think of like that time era where good read if you haven't read it amazing i mean tony morrison is just shout out the legend the legend but um so his father is like really stern right hard working guy trying to provide for his family in the 50s racial times tensions are high etc cetera, etc cetera. so his father is also uh physically abusive to his mother right mm. so as milkman gets a little older he interferes and intervenes when his father, um, you know, becomes aggressive towards his mother pretty yeah. much, right? A little domestic violence situation. Right. Not little. Yeah. A, a domestic <laughs> violence situation. So, Nothing little about that. So. so it gets a little, you know, low heated, needless to say. And later on in the evening, his father comes up to him and is like, if you're going to step, pretty much he's like, if you're going to step to me, know the facts. Like, know why I am the way that I am. Mm-hmm. And that's not to make an excuse for his behavior at all, but it's like, at least know why I have this aggression, why I have this anger built up inside of me. Yeah. So his father goes on to share with Milkman that um, pretty much his his mother, Milkman's mother, mm-hmm. Macon's wife, had a an inappropriate relationship with her father, right? <laughs> so now Milkman <laughs> is carrying this resentment towards his mother for the next few years of his adult life. Right. So first he has this resentment against his dad. Right. Because his dad is toxic and toxic angry and, and mean. <laughs> and angry. Yeah. And now, and now it's pivoted to mom. Right. It's not really pivoted though. Now he's just It's both. Right. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um so years pass, right? And mm-hmm. he's harboring this resentment towards both of his parents. And eventually, you know, another situation happens. I don't want to ramble on too long. But he he asks his mother, like he 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 questions her like mom what dad is said, true? is it true? Yeah. Like, did did X, Y, and Z happen with you and your father? A very disgusting X, Y, and Z. A very disgusting yeah. X, Y, and Z. But good. Needless, <laughs> she goes on to, uh, so she denies the accusations and she mm-hmm. gives her, uh, she gives her side of the story, right? Okay. Moral of the story, yeah, right? Read the book. First of all, get Song of Solomon. It's an amazing read. Uh, but the moral of the story is, it is so important for families to debunk not only toxic silence, Mm -hmm. right? Because Milkman had no idea what was happening in his parents' relationship. He just Mm -hmm. knew that mommy and daddy are not happy, right? There's something going on there. They don't have a good marriage, right? But it it stemmed from something, right? So if they would have addressed the issues, things might have played out differently. Because he harbored, just so I'm clear, he harbored this resentment into his adulthood, correct? Absolutely, right. Okay. 
For um, both parents. Yeah. Got it. So we have to debunk toxic silence and just mm. toxic communication also. Because now he doesn't even know who to believe. His dad said this is ha- this happened. Mm. He, he goes to his mom about it. His mom said, no, it didn't happen this way. This is what actually happened. So now he grows and, up confused right. as a child. And it, it just leads to confusing resentment mm. for children. Yeah. Right? I like that story. I like that opening story. I think to me, what's important for couples, as, y- as y'all are listening, what's important or that what I think is important is first grounding yourselves in an understanding of like the type of family life mm. your spouse came from. That's because it informs that's major. It informs how this person communicates yeah. with you. Yeah. Right. Like everybody tries to avoid being like their mom or like mm-hmm. their dad. I'm going to do this different. But in heated times, what comes out of you mm-hmm. is usually yeah. what has been embedded in you over the course of your childhood, teenage years, and things like that. So I think, and not always bad. Not to cut you off. I'm sorry. Right, right, right. That, that's like, important. Sometimes it's like, oh, too. mom did this. I love that. Yeah, I love this yeah, trait in yeah. mom. Or I love this trait in dad. Let me take that and apply it to my own life. That's important. That's important too, right? Like we don't just absorb curses or generational yeah. like negativity, but we also absorb. Great values from our parents Absolutely. too, if they you know invest that into us. Yeah. Um. So I think in my I personally feel mm-hmm. in our marriage a lot of how both of us communicate with each other uh, is informed by our history, by our past. Absolutely. Right. Like so, there's some of that that's good. There's some of that that's mm-hmm. bad. Um. And we as adults now have to figure out and delineate between what we're going to take and carry over yeah. in terms of how we communicate with our children and, with and what we're going to like dispose yeah. of, you know, that we don't want to carry over into the next generation. My dad always tells us, you know, sometimes you got to learn how to eat the chicken and throw out the bones or eat the fish and throw out the yeah. bones. In other words, something that's good for you might also come with something that's bad for you, yeah. but you got to learn to separate it and get rid of the stuff the you don't from need. The tail. Yeah. yeah. Oh, come on with that Bible. <laughs> separate the wheat from the... Ayah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yeah, but that's good. So let's get into that. Like, I tell think... me a little bit about... Go yeah. Ahead. All right, where, where you want to go? Because I was, right. was going to go into like, I want to hear a little bit more. Well, I want our audience, because I know we've been married, but I want to hear, I want our audience to hear a little bit more of like, how you interpret the way communication happened in your family and then like I'm gonna do the same and we talk about like how I also wanna say that I am gonna get into that. Yeah. Just a quick point. Me I think know. it what has been helpful for our relationship and our marriage is that we've known each other so long. True. So it's not like we met at thirty and got married while we were deep into adulthood. Like mm-hmm. we met during our formative years. We met at mm-hmm. 13 and 14 years old while we're still growing into the people that we, you know, essentially mm-hmm. become and are becoming. Um, so, like, yeah, it's just a little different for us because I think we started a little bit earlier. So we knew, like, we got firsthand experience with how each other was being raised. How we were being raised. Right. Got you. Okay. We had, because we started dating so young, yeah. we had insight not just into the outcome of right, your but like raising, as it was happening, we was saw like how parents and stuff were being happening. I like that insight. That's 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 important. I, I would say this though. I think that most people mm-hmm. story is not like ours. It's not right. Right, like we're more of an anomaly. Not in terms of like creating an elitist mm-hmm. type of no, you know, aura. More so, like most people don't meet in high school and just last throughout the rest of their life. Like that just it's rare, right? Yeah. So. I think there's still some transference mm-hmm. in terms of our communication that even if people met at like 30 something yeah. years old, that would be helpful. We just learned it mm-hmm. late because right, right. we also made dumb kid mistakes and we had to live through Boy, that too. We're going to talk saying? about that later though. Yeah, that's, I don't know. If I don't that's know about this, this episode. Yeah, eventually. But, but we'll talk about that <laughs> later. Right. But so I talk, think- talk a little bit about like just how you interpret it, like in a succinct way, how you interpreted the way you were raised, how your parents communicated, and then like, the good and the bad and the ugly in terms of like how that informs the way we communicate with each other. So like my dad was physically present, right? He's always been like physically present in my mm-hmm. house, but he mm-hmm. he's not emotionally available. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't have like a great relationship with my dad. Like growing up, the most like he took us to Coney Island in the summer. He would take us to McDonald's for breakfast on the weekends, but we just didn't. 
talk. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he was there. He'd be in his room watching TV, yeah. watching sports. And then the, also the hours that he worked, he worked the night shift. Mm. So he worked 3 to 11. Yeah. By the time I came home from school, you know, uh, daddy's, he's daddy's right. He's, he's just not there yeah, throughout yeah, the yeah. day. Yeah, and then I'll on the you. weekends, it's just limited time. And just our relationship, we, we just, like I said, we just didn't talk much. So it's, it's, it's been and it still is awkward. Mm. So like mm. a lot of what we said was just like high and by and passing mm. or... Hey, how you feeling? I'm good. See you later. <laughs> that Got kind you. of thing. Got For you. my mom, um, she was a lot more and is a lot more present um, okay. emotionally. Um, but I think like my mom, I think a lot of my communication styles I got from my mom mm. um, and, and I don't, it's not very good, um, but okay. she was just the one that I had to, when to you learn not from. very good, you mean like. Sorry. Yeah. That's really broad. Yeah, cause shout, she, out, shout out to my mom. Don't you disrespect my I'm mom. Not, I'm not. I'm not. My mother is right amazing. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> but so, so it turns out, like, just, think, just clarify that. Probably. I just think so. my mom is still learning how to communicate. Mm. And some of the nuggets that I've gotten from you, I feel like I'm still teaching to my mom now. Okay. But a lot of the ways that I don't communicate well sometimes, I think I learned from my mom just because she was a dominant like communicated just, to you. Yeah. She do was you a think do presence. you think that had a lot to do with like like your dad? Like do you think your dad communicated with your mom the way he communicated with you, which might have impacted like Like do you think that, that absence <laughs> in your life was like the equivalent to like that absence in her life? So without getting too deep, because I don't wanna, you yeah. know, they're our parents are both alive and active in yeah. both of our lives. So I want to be, make sure that we clarify with any misnomers mm-hmm. of bad parenting, yeah. right? Like, not at all. That I think our, both sets of our parents have done heck of a job raising us. My parents in law have given me an amazing wife. So, um, Facts. I do want to make sure I name <laughs> that. Um, but we talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, yeah, I, yeah. I guess in a succinct way, without like peeling back too many layers, do you think like, some of the the barriers in the ways your mom communicates, you think, has to do with your dad's absence with her in terms of like how he wasn't emotionally present for you. Could be because I mean he also wasn't like emotionally present for her. Mm, so okay. yeah. sometimes I think that comes from and, and and shout out to my mom a little because I think sometimes when you're trying to do a lot by yourself, yeah, you. It, it it takes it takes a toll on you, you know what I mean? And you excel and that's yeah. it. This is anybody's life. Yeah. This is not targeting anyone specific. You excel in one thing, but mm-hmm. not in the other per se. Um so and I think that happens I I'll pivot into like just mm-hmm. my family in general. Um my parents both present, same thing, um, both physically present. I think my I start with my dad. My dad is a pastor, so he's like a communicator. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. As a profession. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it always is, you know, sometimes when you're doing that for so long, it, as it, at home, you, you want to let that, you want to let your hair down. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you don't, you're not as, and you're not trying to be an effective, like, teacher and things like that. Like, you, yeah. you want to raise your kids right, but you're not trying to speak the same way. You're not trying to be preaching. Right. So, you know, my dad, he come up in an era he he from the hood. He come up in that era where like mm-hmm. they they used to go like we call it cutting each other, but like playing the do- or we call it roasting. But mm-hmm. they used to play the dozens or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he come up in that era where like you just had tougher skin. Yeah, that's just the reality, right? Like you just had tougher skin. But I also think that that like translated into like the raising in our era of you know where things are more PC mm-hmm. and you can't say this to you, yeah. and you can't say this. Um, my dad, he, we laugh about it even now because he he knows he got like he's quick at the mm-hmm. mouth. He's slick. so he'll insult somebody quick, not like for no reason. Right. Like he feel like you you trying to play him. Like, like, who what? you talking to? <laughs> what you schmo? He got all kinds of names if you kind of like run through it. So I think there's like leaks or cracks in that communication in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say the way that it carries over to me is like I just gotta. Um, I have like this. My mom is like this quiet storm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like the type that like won't say much, but says a lot. Mm. Her face, her. Yeah. I'm like that. I don't like say a lot, but I say a lot. Mm-hmm. My, my body, my yeah, language, yeah. my body language, my facial expressions, micro expressions, mm-hmm. all that. But when I do open up my mm-hmm. mouth, I'm like my dad. So I'm reserved in my words like my mom, but if I do like lash out, yeah. I'm like my dad. But I want to pivot a little bit because- 
I think this can be also be internalized as just like, what are the bad things about communication? Yeah, yeah. What are some of the good ways that you think, some of the good lessons you learn from just like your household and stuff like that and the styles you were exposed to that your mother was like free or that your dad was like free and open about that might be helpful, that, that you think helps you out in adulthood? Oh, I think that like my mom raising three girls mostly on herself, mm. mostly by herself, um, caused her to be pretty transparent with us because it's three mm. girls. Like I have two sisters. Yeah, I don't yeah. have brothers. So just being able to communicate as quote unquote woman, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, I think like she was transparent in that way. I like that. Um, like That's I have necessary. girls, I want to protect them. So let me give them as much information about some of the stuff that I've gone through as I possibly can to protect them from some of the stuff that daddy's not around to teach them. Mm, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, okay. And then also like she was just, we knew that she was there, but she, she also had us like on a short leash. So mm-hmm. some of the stuff that we wanted to kind of experience growing up, um, going certain places, doing certain things with our friends, mommy was like, no, I need to keep y'all safe. And it's just like, mm. well, let us learn some of these lessons on our own. Um, so I think... Is that you I, saying that's a positive? Because I'm asking about the positive. Are you saying that's a positive thing or a negative thing? Because I'm asking about the positive. I think it's a little bit of both. But let me say this. I think I've taken it now because I have two girls of my own. And now I, I want to be as transparent as possible with them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? Like, my mom raising daughters and now I'm mm-hmm. raising daughters is... Let me not hold back. Let me mm. tell. Even mm. though they have a fully present father, like you are super active. Like, oh yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> you're there, appreciate right? That. Um, that. But just, I guess I, I took from her. Sorry. <laughs> I took from her like the transparency and like the open door policy. Like mom, mm. like I knew that if even if I didn't want to, I knew that mommy was there for me. I like that. I like that. I don't want to dig too deep into that. I want to pivot a little bit into us now, right? I feel like, right, that the the way we communicate with each other is always evolving and improving. This is my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. And I, I, don't want, I don't mean humanity. I mean literally <laughs> you and I. Right, exactly. In my opinion, mm-hmm. right? I think as we age, as we get seasoned, we're getting better. Nobody's perfect, but All we're right. getting better mm-hmm. and better and better, Right. I think part of that has to do with having kids and wanting mm-hmm. to make sure we're communicating effectively in front yeah, of them. Yeah. Um, but how would you rate yourself as a communicator? Um, I want to give a scale. I guess with the one to 10. Yeah. 10 being like, I'm excellent at expressing myself and my feelings. One being, I suck. I probably shouldn't be in a relationship with anyone <laughs> yeah, because I'm that toxic. Um, how would you rate yourself as a communicator? I feel like right now I'm a strong six. Strong six. Strong wow, six. that's low. It is. I wasn't expecting that. Um, but I think like I, I, which is actually <laughs> an improvement. Um, I think a lot of what I, the, a lot of the ways that I communicate can be hit or miss, um, both in in our relationship and with our children. And I'm still learning how to communicate. Mm. Uh, I think it's a lifelong process. Yeah, it's an so ongoing true. process. I agree with that. But I have so much room to grow because there are even times where I'm like, yeah, yeah, go do this. And she, you know, does something. Or if I say, yeah, yeah, go get me a bottle of water. And she brings me a small bottle. I'm like, I said, bring me a bottle of water. Why are you bringing me the little one? You didn't specify. You didn't like, specify. how do I know? That's so, yeah, I mean, I see it, it happens. Yeah, that does happen. So it's teaching me yeah. how. To, hey, all That's right. All right. I'm exposing myself. Chill. So I love the transparency. <laughs> so it's just showing me like every day I'm finding areas um and and I'm seeing room for growth. What are like? I feel like I'm interviewing you. I feel like that too. All right, expose I'm yourself. I am, but I just no, like, I like hearing you. I don't think you're like expressive. I'm not. So I like. I think. I think I'm enjoying hearing these perspectives. This so is not how this was like, supposed to go. You're right. All right, it's getting <laughs> a little interviewee. I would say me. I would rate myself like one to ten. <laughs> God. Ten might be too That's low. <laughs> I'm just playing. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Okay. And I would say the barrier to me not being like at a higher number or the challenge that I have with not being a higher number is simply because sometimes 
things happen in your head and you understand them a certain way. No, that's and when they idea. when they come out your mouth, you assume everybody under is receiving that information yeah. the same way it's played out in your head. Yeah. And that's not always accurate. Mm-hmm. So you get like frustrated. Like, why didn't you do it this you way? You talking about like, me or? I think it happens to me. Right. I'm not. No. Right. Hey. Now, if the shoe only, fits. I was about to say. And the shoe throw fits. Throw a rock and into a pack of dogs. Only the one that get hit how. So. I'm not ashamed to admit that, you know what though. I'm saying? Like, so I think for yeah. me personally, I I see it in my head. Mm. And I think I say it that way. But it, I have to accept that you're a different human. Yeah, people interpret things My daughters things are different yeah. humans. Their brains internalize something because they have a whole different code. And they're younger. Right? They have a whole different <laughs> like genetic code. Like, yeah, it got some of me, but yeah. they're still them. You have, you know, we're one in marriage, but like you're still you. Mm-hmm. And, and at the end of the day, I just want everybody to understand what I'm saying when I say it. Yeah. So really, I get mad, mm. but it really should be me that I'm challenging. Wow. Why didn't you express it as clearly as you saw it? Yeah. And sometimes I don't. And my frustration ends up coming out on somebody mm. that I'm communicating to, like you or the kid, but it might not be your fault. Yeah. It might be, did you say it this way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you share it the way that you saw it? Or if you did, is that the best way that Amanda understands it? Mm-hmm. It might be clear to you, yeah. but does Amanda understand the, the same way you understand it? Mm-hmm. This is where our history is coming, right? Like, I get certain signs. I read people a certain way. So mm-hmm. certain things are like, obviously, do it this way. Yeah, That's not obvious to you. So now it starts coming off condescending. So I got to humble myself and say, we strategize. Yeah, because that it might not be condescending. You just interpret it different. Yeah. And I think that's a big deal. Um, let's move on. You want to talk about what's in the, the next the next point that we... I think I'm going to pose a... It might be a little controversial, but... Okay. A little question. A big question. Big question. Everything we do, we do it big. Stop playing with me. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. So does every couple have to argue? You hear that a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's <laughs> it's weighty. That is weighty. Here's what I'm gonna say. Say it loud. No. I can't say that I know a couple who's never argued. Mm. But I still don't feel like all the times that couples argue, they have to be arguments. Here's what I mean by that. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've normalized. We now I'm speaking humanity, mm-hmm. not you and I. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've normalized like people. How to give feedback or have debates because we differ in opinion without adding hostility to the meal. Like if I'm prepping a debate in my side, Mm -hmm. I don't have to season it with hostility because your meal is different. Mm. And a lot of times we season a disagreement with hostility Mm. or or condescending attitudes. And then that's that's an argument. And a lot of times it's like. I could have communicated this, mm-hmm. but it didn't have to be in a way that was hostile. Yeah, didn't and, have I think, to and I think what we have to start doing, and what I think, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to toot our own a little bit. I think what we have started to normalize, not that we don't fight, not that we don't disagree, I think what we have started to normalize is a household mm-hmm. where you give feedback. Yeah. I know that sounds very like school related or like work related, but like you got to normalize saying something to each other that didn't make you comfortable mm. without saying, I'm mad at you. Mm. Hey, I actually, I don't like the way you did this. Yeah. Or I think you can do this a different way. Here's how I would do this. If more households normalize, yo, man, if you're taking notes, take notes real quick. <laughs> normalize a household, especially if you have children. Mm-hmm. Normalize like giving feedback. Yeah. When I when I say that, that sounds very like, especially for those that work in education, that sounds very like charter schooly. But like, I think the reason people get defensive if they're corrected mm. is because they're not used to being pushed. Mm. Mm-hmm. But if I'm pushing you and yeah. you know what I'm asking you to do or fix is actually making us better yeah. as a family or like And it's as not a just couple, out of like pride or ego. It's not it right. I'm not like speaking out of like do it my yeah. way. I'm saying like, yo, this is actually going to be more efficient. 
if you normalize that, yeah. then what starts to happen? Because right now, on on our on our mamas, <laughs> if Yaya Ozara says, "Daddy, you said you was gonna do this," yeah, do I check them and say you're wrong, <laughs> or do I do what I said I was gonna yeah. do, or give them an explanation for why I couldn't right. do it? Like, to Daddy, you said we was gonna play trouble, take, play trouble, <laughs> or Daddy, you didn't you tell you was gonna take the garbage out this morning? I did say that. I forgot, baby. I'm gonna run and do that now. Yeah. And we don't feel like, neither one of us get offended when they check it. We like make a joke about it, like, oh shit, she thought yeah, we don't demean them because but we don't they're... demean them for correcting right, us. Right. If we're wrong. If we're wrong is wrong. We normalize the feedback. And that's how you become better communicators. So now you take the sting out of arguments. Yeah. Now they just become healthy debates. Where it's like, I see this a different way, you see this a different way. Right. How do we merge? Yeah. Or let's just figure out whose idea is better. Because we don't we might not need not everything. Let me just drop that nugget. On a tan tangentially, real quick. Not everything requires compromise in a marriage. There's sometimes where some way is just a better way. You feel me? There's yeah. sometimes where a way is a better way, and the person that has the worst way just has to agree. Yeah. Male, female doesn't matter, right? Right. But I think you kind of gotta find that balance of like not overdoing mm-hmm. it, but giving feedback, making the normal normalcy in your mm-hmm. house, so then now you can continue to push each other to be better. Totally agree. And I think like that just leads into our next point. Um that we have to be mindful uh how we handle disputes in front of the kids, in front of our girls. Mm. Because Ooh, that's a big one. It's 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 major because <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one. Especially yeah. like having girls and you being the only male presence in the house. Mm. I don't want them to ever see like our disagreements as like daddy scary. You know what I mean? Like, we have to handle it in a way where it's like. Why would they see it as daddy's scary, not mommy and daddy are scary? What do you mean by that? Like, is it just because, like, I'm a bigger presence? Like, if we're disagreeing, mm-hmm. I'm just trying to get clarity. Yeah. Like, if we're disagreeing and God forbid, because I don't think we should. But if we're disagreeing and we're having, like, a shouting match in mm-hmm. front of the kids, what do you think? It, why do you say it's internalized daddy scary, but not mommy scary? I just think, like you said, yeah, you have a bigger presence. Mm. You have a bigger presence. And I just, I don't know if it's, like, innate that men are, like, I don't know how how early on children internalize, like... Physiological differences. Like, roles, like, gender roles. I don't know how early on that, that kind of stuff is internalized or figured out. But I want them to understand not only don't you ever let a man talk to you in a certain way or... Mm. I, I want to model for them a healthy marriage, and I also want to model for them healthy communication, just as people, as little mm-hmm. people, so that mm-hmm. when they get into their own arguments and disagreements, they see how we handle it, so they know how to handle each other. Like they know how mm. to communicate with each other. Um, yeah. I would say I don't know if I, I don't know if I agree in, in in I don't know if I agree totally in terms of like connecting this to like gender roles. I think if there's just something to, like I don't. I think our household, there's some roles, but there's like a lot mm-hmm. of fluidity too. It's more like availability. Mm-hmm. It's more like strengths and weaknesses, yeah. right? Like I think there's more fluidity than just like restricted and constrained gender roles. But what I would say is like, I think if something is just communicated in toxic ways, mm-hmm. I don't want them to internalize it mm-hmm. from mommy or daddy, right? Like yeah. even if they're internalizing, okay, daddy's... 205 pounds he's six feet tall he just looks bigger than mommy but like i i don't know if like if mommy's communicating in a way that feels toxic yeah i just i just don't think they should be internalizing that in general or at least if they see it totally how is it how are we explaining Mm -hmm. like a shift like okay this shouldn't have happened Mm. so even though you saw it let me express that it actually wasn't okay yeah and like you shouldn't internalize that that's the way to be. You know what I mean? Or the way to speak to somebody, right? Yeah. Um, I think, in, 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 I, I say this. If I was raised in, you know, Brazil, mm-hmm. even I look the same, black man, whatever, mm-hmm. I'm, but I'm raised, I'm adopted by Brazilian parents. I've lived there all 32 years of my life. I'm going to speak Portuguese, right? If I'm raised in China, I'm going to speak Mandarin. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm raised somewhere in Africa, I'm going to speak Igbo. Or, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, I think the language we speak is the language you are exposed to. 
Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? The language we speak is the language we're exposed to. Yeah. That has a lot to do with communication as well. The communication methods we use is informed by the communication methods we're exposed to. Yeah. And on, if there are toxic or negative things that we've internalized from our parents and it's like embedded in our code, mm-hmm. it's up to us to like restructure that yeah. and ingest new information of how to communicate, whether that be through healthy communicators, through therapists, through couples that we connect with, through friendships, through YouTube videos, mm-hmm. through prayer, through reading scripture, whatever it is. It's up to us to ingest what's a better way so that we can start to speak the language of healthy yeah. communication and not just I'm made like this because yeah. I was raised like this. I think like, this is just I'm gonna be honest, I, I think accepted. that's just a <laughs> I, yeah, I think that's just a poor excuse. Yeah. That's like telling somebody Jay-Z was raised poor. That's like telling him he shouldn't have become a billionaire because he was raised yeah. poor. Right? Like yeah, I, I don't think that just because we were raised a certain way. Mm. We should use that or allow that to be our crutch yeah. for how we're communicating um, in, in front of the children. And just being mindful of like um, how we handle disputes. We have had arguments, right? Let's be of very course. clear. We of have course. had arguments in front of the kids. Yeah. I don't like it. Me either. It doesn't happen <laughs> often because yeah. I do not like it. I don't like it. I don't. Oh God, I can I feel, probably I count teary eyed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On one hand, I, I don't like the times. I don't Sorry. like the look in their eyes. Yeah. I don't like the discomfort that it looks like they have to me mm-hmm. after a dis- disagreement. It almost looks like who was that? Mm-hmm. Like they could see th- these people that are talking to each other. Oh. And they're not the same yeah. people. Right? I also <laughs> want them to feel like they're gonna get the remnants of what we went through. Like, yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Is mommy and daddy's wrath gonna come down on us yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. Am I in trouble? Can I yeah. not play with right. them? Can I not? Yeah, right. that's a good point. That's a good. point. I don't want them to ever get the residue of what you and I going through. Like, mm. or feel like they can't come to us. They can't communicate with us. Like, there's some barrier now between us because mommy and daddy are angry. Yeah, yeah. I agree, and I think one. One thing that we've done, and I'm going to give us credit for real quick. Facts. I don't know what the credit is, but. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had a disagreement in front of the kids, though they are few in number. Uh-huh. Not the disagreements are not few. Let me be clear. Mm-hmm. Disagreements in front of the kids that have been hostile. I don't think we've ever had a disagreement in front of the kids that afterwards we did not sit them down mm. and talk to, not just talk to them, but apologize to each other in front of them. Yeah. Every time. Right? Like. Parents out there, if, yeah. if you are like in a relationship where it's like y'all just have disagreements in front of the kids all the time, you should try to find other means. I learned this from my dad. Like he said, throw throw pots and pans in the backyard if you need to, but in front of the kids, find a healthier way. Yeah. And if they need to see you, if they do see you throw pots and pans, explain to them how you were feeling yeah. and what commitment you're going to make so that you can try to avoid acting out like that again and it's not to like put on a facade or like absolutely you know what i mean that's why we talk after because god forbid they never see mommy and daddy have a disagreement and they think mommy and daddy are the prime example of a husband and wife and then then it could break down god forbid mommy and daddy get divorced it's like what Mm. (laughs) like why how so Mm. i think it's important for them to see those disagreements, wow. they just have to happen in a healthy way because they need to see that we're still human. Yeah, they need to relate mm. to us. So mm. I'm not saying that it is nowhere in our plans <laughs> to like separate, but they just need to see that it like it happens and there's a healthy way to do it. Mm. Not only yeah, there's a healthy way to do it, and if it happens unhealthily, there's a healthy way to respond. Yep, there's a healthy way to commit to. Being better, yeah, and I think that's 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 important for kids to know. I want you to talk about because this is this is super dope to me. So before we close out, I want you to talk about. Um, so there's something you do before mm-hmm. the girls go to bed yep. every day, and mm-hmm. I don't mean like most days. I mean literally every day of the week yeah. you do it. I don't know where it came from. I don't know how it started. Mm-hmm. I just know it is probably the most superhero like. Beautiful thing that happens, and I tried it before, and it just ain't the same. <laughs> I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be honest; it just ain't the same. There are things that I have with the kids that are special. Right. That when you try, they like, "Mommy, get out of here!" Right. So, like, we both have those things. Yeah. Talk to them about. Talk to our audience mm-hmm. about what you do with the girls before bedtime and why that's important in terms of healthy communication in our household. 
Yeah, so every night when the girls uh, lay down before they go to bed, like <laughs> I'll ask them, I say same two questions every night. How was your day? What made you happy today? Yeah. And whether mommy's tired. You're a hero, dog. Whether Dang, I don't bro. feel like it. It doesn't matter how I'm feeling, what I have to do, if I have homework to do, if I have... Whatever it is, I'm going to make sure when I lay them down, I ask them. One, and individually, too. I'm not going to ask them collectively. Mm. I take my time and I go to one bed. You're a whole and when they finish, I go to the next bed. How was your day? And they're going to either say it was good or bad or whatever their response is and what made you happy. And I think that it just gives them an opportunity. Like, I want to validate their feelings, their emotions, their thoughts. I don't care how old they are. Oof. Their feelings are important dang you are getting very high yo like it you are it hero. matters you know what i mean like it matters dang. um i don't remember <laughs> i don't remember when it started or why i know it started sometime during quarantine i just know it's every day <laughs> it don't stop it's beautiful yeah. it's like it's beautiful it happened dang. sometime during quarantine and i don't i don't remember i just don't remember but it stuck and they don't, it they stuck. won't go to bed yeah. without it. It's and not it, like you've ever yeah. forgotten, but when it does happen, yeah. it's like, it seems like you're taking too long to come Yeah, like if you and I them. are doing something and yeah, I'm taking like, a long time. to ask us our questions? <laughs> I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot I'm coming. Or I'll let them know if it's going to take me a minute. Yo. Go brush your teeth. Mommy will be there in two minutes. Go lay down, say your prayers, brush your teeth. I'll be there in two minutes. Yeah. So that they know like I haven't forgotten and I care. Like I want to hear about it. So if something, and it just gives them a chance to like just talk. You know what I mean? Like, well... I liked when I was playing at the park and I went down the slide and then I like playing trouble with mommy and daddy and we went to Barnes and Noble and then we were watching Pocahontas. Right. It just gives them a chance to just go back throughout their day so that not only do they have a chance to tell me, but that they can internalize themselves the, the things that make them happy. I, you know what I mean? I also think something else is happening where like... I think they are learning to appreciate the little things mm, at a young age. Yeah, like they're yeah. learning like value in the, the little stuff. Wow. That life is not about just happiness when you got a lot of money in yeah. the bank. Life is not just about happiness when mommy or daddy does something extravagant like mm-hmm. throw a two, three thousand dollar party. Mm-hmm. Like life is also about the small stuff. I was happy sitting at the table eating with my family. Yeah. I yeah. was happy going outside and having a chance to run. I was happy talking to dad and doing handstands with him in the living room. Like they're they're I this is how I'm internalizing. Yeah. They're gaining an appreciation for like the little things. And I believe if that value continues to be fed, mm-hmm. they're not just gonna be blessed by God with little stuff, but he's going to make them steward over great things because mm-hmm. they knew how to appreciate little things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I just think, I just wanted to highlight that because I don't tell you often enough and I'm not doing it because we have a crowd or an audience, but man, it's just, it's like heroic to me because you just don't stop. Like you're relentless with it and it's, it's just heroic to me, but I wanted to highlight that. I want to close this out. Um, there's a couple things that I just want to say. Two parents out there. Um, I, w- I want to conclude with this. Um, this, I guess we could call it like how to function. And then we're going to do our, we got to do our this, this. We got to do, do this, this. this. We're going to close with this, this. But <laughs> we're going to leave with some tools on how to function. Once again, I got to say this. I said this the first episode, but it's not from an elitist standpoint. Mm-hmm. It's not from, oh, we're better than anybody. But I think there are certain things that are transferable that we're doing that would be helpful for yeah. other households right. that, that, that are struggling in these areas. And we want our children to be effective communicators, right? Facts. And in order for that to happen, we have to model what effective communication is like. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean everything is going to be peachy, everything is going to be roses, but it does mean if things are not going well, explaining why you're feeling the way you're feeling as an adult and what commitments you're making to try to improve in that area or make sure that your children don't have to suffer from that mm-hmm. same thing. Mm-hmm. Um I think both of us were kind of raised in strict households, yeah. um, and we both struggle with this, mm-hmm. um, but we're working on it, um, and that's just like trying not to be overcorrective, 
Yeah. I think, we, you know, I think sometimes we want the best and I know parents struggle with this, but try to avoid being overcorrective because what you're going to get is an obedient child, mm-hmm. but a child that's scared to take risks. Mm. Yeah. You have to find the middle ground of making sure they listen to their parents, they honor their parents, but that they have enough flexibility that they won't be scared to take risks mm-hmm. because if they become obedient, but not risk takers, they're not the people that's going to be running companies in the future. Mm. They're not the people that's going to be ambitious enough to say, I'm going to be the first black woman to get my doctorate in engineering from this Ivy League school. They're not going to be the first to say, hey, I'm going to, you know, build housing and, and be a real estate developer because they're going to be too scared yeah. to fail because we over disciplined. So just be mindful of that um, and make sure that you're modeling um you know, healthy communication. There is a renowned psychologist um, who did a study on couples. And I want to leave you with this. Um, He said, there's two things that you'll see in every healthy couple. Mm -hmm. Um, He said, in every healthy couple, there's two things you see. He said, one thing that you'll see is that there's an approximately a five to one ratio of positive things to negative things said to each other. Mm. So please Thank you. Yeah. God bless you. Baby, you look beautiful. Baby, you looking strong. Mm-hmm. Push ups is working. You know, something like that. <laughs> the squats working. You know, things. Not like right. That. <laughs> you know, things like that. There's a. There's a. He said in every healthy couple, <laughs> one of the statistics is that there's five to one healthy to positive to negative things said about each other, which is interesting. So keep that in mind. And the second statistic he said is that um, we respond to each other's requests. Nine out of every 10 times. So that means if I see a call for help Mm -hmm. or you're requesting my attention, I respond. Out of every 10 requests, I respond at least nine times. So keep that in mind. It's hard to keep tab. It's hard to tabulate that. But just don't think about the numbers. Think about how you can do that. Just do it more often. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You ready for this, this? Let's do it. I'm ready. For those that don't know, this, this is like our version of this or that, but it's kind of like we just choosing. It's like this or this. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a little. They get it. They get it. They get it. It's only second episode, so I'm just hoping they get it. We bomb. We didn't bomb. We were. We were truthful. I don't think the goal is to try to be. It's not, but I just feel like at least one out of the three. To be honest, maybe we just not meant to be together. I'm just playing. All right. Oh, you didn't like that. I slept. Fire out you. Bad joke, bad, bad joke. joke. All, All right. right, here we go. This, 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 this. I want to. You want me to start the first question? No, you started the first last time. Sure. All right. Do your thing. All right. Would you rather have no change of clothes and your kid peed on themselves in public, or would you rather have no change of clothes and your kids vomited on themselves in public? That's it. For those that are listening on podcasts, we're going to say the answers. For those that are watching on YouTube, you'll see it on our whiteboards. Ready? I'm ready. Flip. Vomit. Hey! hey. For those that saw the last episode, we disagreed <laughs> on, on everything. Each one. All right. Here we go. We don't even need no explanation. Do you need anything? Nah. nah. We just do it. All right. Second one. Would you rather raise your parents... Or have your children raise you? That's tough. Taking a long time to finish writing. All right, ready? I don't know. Don't be cheating either. You ready? I'm ready. Raise your parents or have your children raise you? There we go. Go. Flip. What you got? You rather raise your parents? Yeah. I'd rather have my children raise me. My kids are dope. Our kids are. They, they, they are have, like, great the kids. I wouldn't mind Yaya or Zara being my mom's. No disrespect to my mom because my mom did an excellent job. Here's, here's my thinking, though. <laughs> I think that we have fire kids because because we raised them. Oh, you're flexing. Oh, that's a little flex. Okay. I think I would rather go back and be able to teach some of, teach my parents some of the things that like I learned. That's um cool. I like that. I just think our kids without our parenting might be slightly different, but a lot mm-hmm. of who they are was who they were before they got in your womb. And mm-hmm. they're just like destined to be those types of people, yeah. those people types. And um, I just think they'd be dope. Mm. All right. Last yeah. one. 
Ooh. Okay. <laughs> this is tough. For those of those of you who watch, uh, well, I'm sure everyone's seen at least one episode of the Cosby Show, um, and pre knowledge of all these allegations. Yeah, this is that totally disconnected to who Bill Cosby, the accusation accusations made against him, be it be whether they are true or false. We are talking about the, the show. Yeah, okay. the character. So let's get it. Cliff Huxtable. So who are the better parents, Dre and Rainbow Johnson from Blackish? Or Claire and Cliff Huxtable from The Cosby Show? Who are the better parents? The Johnsons or the Huxtables? Okay. Ready? Yeah. Well. This is crazy. I know I'm about to get slandered. <laughs> I got the Johnsons. You have the Huxtables. I got the Huxtables. Here's my take on that. Let me explain. Yeah. All right. Let me explain. All right. The Huxables are elite. Absolutely. Here's my thing. Okay. Maybe it's just because of the generation, mm-hmm. right? They are great. Like Claire and, and Cliff, they flex, right? I'm a doctor. She's a lawyer. And we still doing this parenting thing. They were amazing at getting their kids on track mm-hmm. to excel. In terms of going to school, mm-hmm. like getting the kids to college, that was their goal. Getting the kids out there, like if you listen to a lot of the episodes, it was like making the kids successful mm-hmm. by going to college and getting them out of my house. Mm-hmm. That was their thing. Dre and Rainbow deal with a lot more complex issues. Like Theo's biggest issue was like a Gordon Gartrell shirt, whereas. Junior on Blackish, that boy spent two days at Howard, got into a great institution, and came back home. It's like you just got to deal with it. It's like they've had to deal with drugs, and like I, I just think they've dealt with way more complex issues in that show that flex their layers of parenting more than Cliff and and Claire have had to deal with. That's my argument, and I'm sticking to it. But I love to hear your side. This was tough, and I'm not sure that I'm like fully committed to my answer. I need to watch a couple more episodes of the Cosby Show. I'm gonna get slandered, anyway. but I just feel like Dre is mad and mature, and he he <laughs> always like he apologizes after the fact, and like he he makes sure like that he humbles himself and like goes to whoever he transgressed like after the fact. Whereas Claire and Cliff are. They're just more mature in how they parent. Mm. So they, they don't really need, they don't really have to like go back and fix anything. Mm. Whereas Rainbow was mad cocky too. Like she's annoying. <laughs> like Rainbow was. I love that. Yeah, I so love that. I'm both, not changing my answer, but I love yeah. your perspective. Yeah. All right. Both shows are fire anyway. Yeah. Watch it's some your- Blackish. I love Blackish. But anyway, yo. Episode two in the books. In the books. Let's yeah. wrap it up. Yo, make sure y'all subscribe, follow, share, share, like, like, comment, comment, all that, all that. Um, this functional family podcast on IG, mm-hmm. um, this functional family podcast on everything. I guess. Yeah. All right. Y'all find us. You already know. Peace.